Hey everybody, it's Dave Vegdale, learningvideo.com. I'm gonna try not to make this video too complicated because um, once you get into color grading, color monitors and LUTs and uh, ways to calibrate it, it can get very complicated. This is a video of more like what not to buy and I'll kind of explain why as I go through. So I got two new monitors in. Uh, this is like my sixth one I've reviewed. Haven't found one I liked yet. I'm going to tell you I'll, the part number. This is the BenQ. It'll be down listed below. This is, I guess you would say what not to buy. I can show you what the two problems I have. The first problem is if I hit play. You can see right here, everything looks fine. But over here, our hair, you can see it pulsating. Um, so that's definitely a problem. The second problem is this uh, panel is not a true 10 bit panel with HDMI. Uh, this panel is not, a, this is not a true 10 bit either. It's kind of a quasi 10 bit. I guess they use some dithering or some weird stuff going on. Way too technical. I don't quite understand it, but you can actually see the um, gradation lines going through this uh, gradient, um, both of these. Now I did have the ISO, ESO, however you pronounce it before, in that last review I did, that was a true 10 bit panel with HDMI. And that one had a beautiful smooth transition along here. This one doesn't. Um, the only way you could get it is if you go DVI or DisplayPort. And the unfortunate thing is I'm using the Blackmagic mini monitor inside my Windows 10 computer to drive this and it's only got SDI and this does not have an SDI input and it does not have, um, you know, doesn't have the right connections. So I would need another box to put between here and my computer, $500 box to go from like SDI to DVI to make this a true 10 bit monitor. So that's going to add an extra 500 bucks to the cost, which I don't think I want to do. Plus it has that problem that I just showed you and I can't seem to figure out the refresh rate uh, or whatever that issue is. It seems like a refresh rate issue where it's kind of pulsating and it does some really other weird things too, as you're coming up out of a, like a, a dissolve. It changes colors, it adds blue, magenta, and red into the frames, like in between the frames. But as soon as you hit stop, it looks fine. So, and you can also notice there's kind of a difference in color. This has not been calibrated. This is calibrated, which brings me to um, calibration. I, I just got this one in. I have another calibration um, device. This is the i1 Display Pro from X-Rite. I have another X-Rite, it's cheaper. So I want to review this one as well. Um, but what's nice about this monitor, I believe this software interfaces with this monitor quite easily. I don't know yet because I'm probably going to just send this back to B&H because um, of those two issues. And then there's an NEC down here. I'll, again, I'll put the part number. Actually, I can see it's PA242W. Um, also a well-regarded monitor. Um, I think more on the graphics side, like you're doing Photoshop and stuff like that. That one doesn't work either. Um, that one doesn't work at all. No signal at all comes to this, and it's basically a um, out of range error. Um, so when you have a 1080 24p timeline, like I do here, um, the NEC can't even handle it. Um, you can see I got my Shogun right here. I'm just using to see myself, but the Shogun will take that signal just fine from the Black Magic Mini Monitor. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to make this video just so if you're going down the same road I am, trying out different monitors, um, probably the best one I've tried so far was in that previous review of the ESO. Um, I'll put a part number down below or, you, or put a link to the other review I did. That one was really close, but that was really expensive. These two monitors are like in the $800 range. And these two monitors are actually quite older. They came out like maybe 18 months to 24 months ago, so they're about two years old. Who knows, it might be getting refreshed quite soon. I have no idea. Um, but the new ESO uh, worked quite well, but it was really expensive, like $2,000. The only thing wrong with it is if you got off axis 30 or 40 degrees, um, it would change quite significantly. So that's pretty much it. I hope maybe that helps somebody out that might be going down the same road I am. And there was a few other recommendations on my ESO uh, video. There's some Dells and some others that I'm going to be looking at next. But if you have any suggestions, if you've got all this stuff set up for DaVinci Resolve um, and you're having great success with it, basically what I, this is what I'm looking for is a 10-bit panel 
around 24 inches. It could be bigger than that, like 27, that's okay. I'm really not interested in 4K. I've tried a 4K monitor already. Like I said, I've tried many monitors. 4K just doesn't work well because I don't want to drive all those pixels. I want to, I mostly publish in a 1080 timeline like this. Um, it might be a 4K camera, like what this is, but it's being downsampled to 1080. So 1080, um, it doesn't have to be a true 1080. Like this one is actually, you can see the black bars right here. That This one I think is 1200 um, resolution. 10-bit, um, 20, around 24 inches, and also can be calibrated quite easily. So if I can connect this up to here somehow, I don't even know yet. Um, and it, you know, there's that closed loop system of calibration will keep it nice and tidy. All right, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.